Okay, so um, welcome to all of us. I would start the tutorial on search engine optimization for online content. Um, very often when we are supposed to write for online readers, um, it is important for us to know that content that are similar to ours may already exist. And so uh, since there are other content that already exist, people could easily find them and not yours. Hence the need for search engine optimization so that um, even if your content is new, so far as it is related to a given topic that a reader is looking for online, that reader would be able to see your content. But for that reader to see, Google and other search engines should be able to understand what your content is about and be ready or willing to share your content as one of those that fall within the category that the, cross, uh, the reader is looking for. And so you would agree with me that very often when we are all looking for information, we go to Google and we type certain words into the search space bar, and then it pulls out a series of contents. If someone does something like that related to your content and your content is not on the first page, the probability that you get someone visiting that content is near zero. And so every good content must find its way to the first page of Google when that uh, 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 keywords related to your content is searched. And the, one of the ways to make your content relevant so that people can easily assess or see it and which will lead to increased traffic to your website and your content is search engine optimization, which is simply SEO. Now, I will start this way. You ask yourself if you want to, if, if you were to hear that your, your country is, is, has won a football match, uh, what are you going to be keen? And you didn't watch, it has won a football match. You didn't watch the game. You've not read from anywhere, but you've heard it on radio. And you want to read more about it. What are you going to type into the search engine when you go to Google? The words you are going to type, someone has written a content with those words in it. So that the moment you type it and your words to a large extent match what the person has put out there, Google will pull that out as one of the search results. And so when you do a search, the first content on that page is the most important and they follow in that order. And when you scroll down to the stream edge of the page, you will notice that there are two, three, four pages and et cetera. It means there are other contents there, but yours has surfaced on page one. And very often readers, including ourselves, will not go beyond page two. So if you are not on page one, we say the likelihood that you will not be noticed when you publish a content is very high. The second reason why your content may not be noticed when you publish it is when you copy from other websites or from other sources. When you copy content from another website and you publish directly, you give the uh, website from which you copied from more authority. You are telling Google that, look, I copied this content and that it is actually from this particular website. And so Google will rank that website very often above yours. So the more you copy a content from some particular website, the higher that website will rank and vice versa. So if others are copying from your website, your content will rise above them. And so when people are looking for similar content, Google will show yours first above this. Now, if I want to write a content that is optimized so that people can easily find it and which to bring in free traffic to your content or your website. The first thing is your title. Very often, um, we see content on other websites 
and then people just copy and then post it. If you have a title for a content and that title is not well phrased, it can also make you lose uh, uh, readership. And so I'm sharing the screen of one of our colleagues here who has sent in a content. It says, analysis of Gladys Casely Hayford's rejoice. Okay, so the first question is that this content, what is it about? If I look at the, um, what's the name? The heading, I see uh, analysis of Gladys Casely Hayford's rejoice. I presume that it's a poem. So the key words I'm looking for, which I want to run so that in case of someone, in case someone searches for this content, the person can find them or can find this content is Gladys Casely Hayford's Rejoice or Gladys Poem Rejoice or an, 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 an analysis of Gladys Poem Rejoice. These are all key words that people are likely to be typing to look for content related to this material. And so I like the topic or the heading because it indicates exactly what we are, the content is about. Now, if you get the title right, you cannot go into the content. Sometimes people write very long titles. When you write very long titles and you put it out there, sometimes Google will not show all. And so if the keywords in the title are far away, then Google will be hiding the rest and people may even see your content on page one and skip. And so this title is a little bit, okay, we would try to uh, index it and see how it goes. Now, when you have a title like this, the next thing you look at is your paragraph one. Paragraph one of your content must have the keywords in it. So let me see. This one says, Gladys Casely Hayford's rejoice is a persuasive poem. Very good. So you can see that Gladys Casely Hayford's rejoice is right at the beginning of this content, which means that it's in paragraph one. That is excellent. Now, in writing the rest of the content, to make sure that your content is visible to people who are interested in these keywords, Gladys Casely Hayford's Rejoice or analysis of Gladys Casely Hayford's Rejoice must reappear in the content at least two times, depending on the length of the content. So I could say that uh, looking at paragraph two, the title of the poem, Rejoice, sets the poem ready for its development. The opening or introductory lines of the poem state, blah, 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 blah. When I go through the whole paragraph, I don't see Gladys Kisley Hayford's Rejoice in it. Hello? Hello. Are you with me? Yes. So since yes, I don't see yeah, we do. very good. Since I don't see Glad Gladys Kesley Hayford's rejoice in paragraph two, to make sure that my content is noticed by readers and that Google sees my content as talking about Gladys Kesley Hayford's rejoice poem, I have to introduce that phrase into the second paragraph. So I'm going to do that quickly. Just copy this content. Um, okay. Let me see if I can stop sharing the. Um, okay. So just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to share the new screen as I work with it so that we see what I'm talking about. Um, so.
Okay, can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay, so this is the second paragraph. I want to introduce the, um, the information Gladys Kisley Hayford into it. So wherever I place it, it must be relevant and it should fuse into the content. So let's say, The poem by Gladys Paisley Hayford. I hope I got those spellings right. So I have introduced something similar to that particular heading into the poem. So the poem into the article, the poem by Gladys Paisley Hayford titled Rejoice. Come on. Says the poem ready for development. I think it makes a lot of sense. Then let me quickly stop sharing this again and go back to. Again. Oh, I missed that. Where's my WhatsApp screen? Okay. So now I'm going back to the WhatsApp screen. Okay. So I have tried to introduce the, somehow the title into paragraph two. Now, the next thing when you are writing content, you want it to be noticed by readers easily and that search engine should be able to pull it out as a search result for people who are interested in that content is that you should have subheadings at least one or two of the subheadings should have something related to Gladys Kisley Hayford's rejoice as a heading so I could decide to introduce that as just after the first paragraph or just after, before the third paragraph, and make sure that the topic is related to the paragraph that it falls under. So quickly, if I go to paragraph three, I see in the second stanza, the persona refers to the black or brown people as a people of great nation and a people of great birth. Very good. So I'm going to do something with this one. I'll copy this content just to introduce a subheading for this. Um, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. Let me just copy this. Stop. Then now I introduce it into this page. I'll show you the screen very soon. Okay, very good. This one is also. Okay, so sharing the screen straight away. Okay, so I have copied the exact title here. I'm going to modify it to suit the sub paragraph. So this paragraph is talking about the second stanza. So analysis of Gladys Kisley, Hayford's Rejoice. I'm introducing second, because it's a poem that is being analyzed, it's a little bit different, but second stanza. Second stanza, okay. So I can say of the second stanza of I'm 
introducing poem here. Okay. So now, what I have done so far is that one, we have a title that has uh, that is Kisley Hayford's Rejoice. In paragraph one, we have Gladys Kisley Hayford in it. We have Rejoice as well in the same sentence. Now, in our before our third paragraph, we have the same keywords surfacing again. So as you keep repeating this keyword in your subheadings and in the main content, what you are doing is that we say you are optimizing the content for search engine. You are making it easy for search engines should, to be able to tell exactly what your content is about. So that when you publish it, they can pull it out as a search result for readers. Now, another thing you will do is that as you are doing the, uh, um, uh, using the keyword, you should be looking out for synonyms, or other words that may people may search for in place hey, of hello 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 hi okay you have a question hello uh, hello okay so i can go i can hear you can hear you can okay. hear you very good so now that we have introduced uh, that Gladys Kesley Hayford threw out the content so far. You would agree with me that each time we introduce it, we see rejoice and point. So when we are indexing, we are going to be using Gladys Kesley Hayford's rejoice. We'll be using the poem, the word poem, or uh, Kesley Hayford's poem titled rejoice. We'll be using these words so that each time we introduce them, there's a word in it that relates to the title or the subheadings. So very often when you are writing your subheadings, you use the um, H1, sorry, H2, H3, H4 headers. So what I will do quickly is that I'm going to paste this content right into WordPress, and then I'll share the page with you. You see, we see what is happening in that. Then I can continue with the, the lesson. Pick, 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 pick. Um, so I'm going to use one of the websites I write on to Okay, so I have logged into my system. I will share with you quickly how we are going to make good use of the content and the titles. So I'm sharing my screen once again. Hello, I hope you can see the screen now. Yes. Okay, so I have copied a section of the content and I'm using WordPress the original back end of WordPress. So um, I paste my content here. Hope it surfaces very good. Um, this is the original title. I'm copying into the title header section and then editing. Analysis of Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem. I'm sure that is the title, our brother who shared it with us. Yes. Okay. So now we have the title in there. Um, 
if I, I want to check how often these words appear, you can use word, normal word, to, uh, uh, when you're using um, MS Office, you can use it to search as well. So let's say Control F, uh, Gladys. So Casely. So we can see that uh, from this part of the content, Gladys Casely is showing two times which is enough for the small nature of the content, the section of the content that I have copied. Now, the next thing you will do if you are using a full WordPress is to reduce the length of your paragraphs. When paragraphs are long, Google doesn't like them. So it should be shorter. Very often, not more than 20 words in each sentence. So whether there are more than 20 words in a sentence, they uh, Google would, uh, sorry, the, the search engines may have difficulty analyzing it. Now, I have broken it into smaller units. The next thing is to work on the subheading. I go to my paragraph and then I choose header two. Header one is the same as your title and you're not supposed to repeat header one more than once in a content. So the header one is an automatic a, a, a default for your title. So that one is there. Now, with what I have done so far, for those who work at the back end, you will see that search engine, C -S -E -S -E -O, is ash, it's supposed to be green. When it is ash or red, it means you have a lot of work to do. So the first thing I want to work on is my focus key. You can see it here, the focus key is basically what the key you want to rank for. So that when people search for content related to Gladys Kisley here for, they will find your point or your analysis. So I'm going to copy this and paste here. It should not be more than four words of, yes, four words. So your key phrase should not be more than four words. You can see that just after pasting it, I see yellow which means I have improved, but it is not enough. So I keep working on it. The next thing you will do if you are using the back end is that you come to your edit sniper here and you wipe everything here. So I delete and then I delete. Right now, what is left is the title. It is green. Green means quality. So if you wipe everything and you leave only the title and it still doesn't show green, it means that you have to go to your title and work on it. So let me just add something and let's see what happens to the title down there. So assuming this is my title, let me go back to, okay, it is still there. So let me add a few and go back. You can see what is happening here. It's showing red, the long line, which means that it's not good at all. When you publish the content, this is what will be coming. Because it's too long, some of the sections will get miss, missing and people will not find them. So we go back and then I take off all these. Very often I recommend that you copy your title, come here and delete everything. Though it's the same thing and paste it. Now, I want to improve on the probability or increase the chance, the chance that my readers will click and visit the content. So I'm going to introduce an action word or a word that will make people feel like they want to really read this analysis. So a critical, a critical analysis of Gladys Kesley Hayford's poem, Rejoice. So now I think I'm okay with this title. I copy and then I paste also here. The next thing I do is the permalink. 
This is the URL that people will be seeing. I want it to be such that people can easily have, uh, 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 people can easily read it and that it shouldn't be too long. People should able, be able to read it quickly too. It should not be too long. And then finally, you have the keywords in it. So the keywords in this title is, the key words are Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem, Rejoice. So I copy, let me cut and paste. I copy and then I edit. I wipe everything here and then I paste it there. All these things we are doing, we are optimizing the content. If somebody has published a similar thing, let's say there's a breaking news and so many websites are published. You go onto, you type in the keyword and you see only a few websites. The rest published, but it did not index or optimize the content very well. So now we have done that one. The permalink has been improved on. When you watch this side, um, on, the, on the right side, you see draft, you see uh, visibility, status, readability, search engine optimization, okay. I want to improve on it. One of the reasons why it is okay is that the content I have posted or pasted into the interface is 211 words. The minimum should be 300 words. So I'm going to add the remaining content from our, our colleague into uh, uh, here. So let me quickly log off this and then assess the content. Um, I think it's on WhatsApp. Okay, so. I am copying uh, the rest. We should help me get 300 words. Okay, so here we go. I'm introducing the screen once again. So I'm adding the rest of the content. The persona poses a uh, my brother, have I missed anything in that content? Quickly, let me assess the uh, my network is quite bad, so I've not seen the screen yet. Oh, okay. Okay, I've seen it. I missed I missed something actually. Thanks. Right. Okay, so I go back to my content. I'm sharing the screen straight away. Okay, so this was the missing content. Very good. So now we have 341 words. A rhetorical. So I, I, I want to introduce another um, key phrase that contains Gladys Kesley Hayford's poem. Um, for where would, you, where would you spring the flowers if God took away the earth? It is known per Christian perspective that, okay, so I can blend this as a heading. This is what I do the Christian perspective, the Christian perspective and Gladys Kesley Hayford's poem, Rejoice. So I am indirectly telling whoever is reading that the section you are going to, you are going to look at a Christian perspective which relates to the poem. Now, you will notice that I have had that too again. I want to change it to, uh, H3, which is a lower, so it's smaller. Very good. So now two headers. I want to leave this like that and go to the tail end. Now, if you look here, I have meta description. This is a summary of the entire content and you must introduce your keywords here again. So you delete as usual. Then very, some, sometimes if you are in a hurry, you just have to copy your first paragraph. That is if you have your keyword in your uh, first paragraph. 
your first paragraph comes in and you paste it into your meta description. Now you notice that the meta description is yellow. It means we are doing well, but it is too long. So I would cut off a few of the content and see what happens. I'm taking off this. It is still green. So read this. I'm introducing something. Read this critical analysis. Read this critical, very good, analysis. Read this critical analysis. And I'm introducing this because it's important. And if it turns something else, we will take it off. Okay. So Gladys. Yes, Lee Hayford's poem. Um, P E O M. Rejoice sets the sets the poem ready for its development. Read this critical analysis and the Christian perspective. So I have picked all the relevant keywords and fused them together. Sometimes it may not make too much sense, but you try as much as possible to make it relevant to the content. So I have done that. Now, if you have the back end, what a lot of people miss is this. If you have the back end, you come to insight. If you click on insight, it tells you the words you will be ranking for. The words that when people key or search, they will find your content for. And you will notice that if you look at the third one, it says Gladys Kesley Hayford's poem, Rejoice. It means we are going to rank for this poem. Then it also has Gladys Kesley Hayford's poem, which is related to the third, uh, uh, third one in the space. So the fourth and the fifth are like your synonyms for the keyword. So I will copy one of them. This is what very often we do at the back end before the content gets published. So I'll copy one of them and come to this place. We have the keyword we want to run for already here. When I click, it has another key phrase I have to type in here. So I put this one in, I'm going to work on it. Uh, is the Hayford's point. So let me take off the Gladys and see. Okay, so I have something like this. We are still trying to optimize. Now you see that there are a lot of red buttons here. As many of them must tend to um, green. The first one is outbound link, a link to another website that, um, that has a content related to your content, or that has a keyword, a, a word in your phrase or a sentence a, a content that is related to it. So for instance, if there is a, a website that publishes a lot of points, one could go to that website, pick a, rel, a, a related content or just the type, the, the URL of the website, and then come and Fuse it into your content. So let me get something quickly. Um, and I will stop sharing the screen for a moment and pick that one up. Um, stop sharing. So poems, poems of Gladys. Okay. I, I think I found a name related to this particular point. So Gladys Kesley Hayford. Okay, that's fine. So I found something about her, which is excellent. So I will share my screen soon. 
um, okay, this is me. So I'm sharing the screen. I went to check on Gladys Kesley Hayford. It's she's, she's a prominent person. So this is the link I got from uh, penispoetry.fandom.com and it's connected to Wiki. So it's a key outgoing URL. So I picked just one of the keywords. I'll pick Gladys. Then I go to the insect or edit um, link and click on it. Then I paste the URL that I copied, which will help people to make follow-ups on Gladys write-ups. Then I click on the, let me show what I did right now quickly. I'm starting all over. Select, click on insect, and then you paste into this. Then the link options, you click on it, and then you, you select open link in new window, new tab. If you don't click this, what happens is that when the person clicks on Gladys, the person will leave your website, so you lose visit. So, but when you say open a new link, the person's visit to your website will still be there, but the website will open another link for Gladys uh, additional information. Then, um, okay, after that, you take, an, you take a related content from your um, website or from the, yes, from your website. Then you introduce it into any of the sections. So maybe read poetry, read more poems, read more poems. Um, so probably, okay, let me use this link for teaching purposes. Let me use this link. So I now go read more poems here. Maybe check them now. The same procedure, just like the outgoing URL. This one is inbound. So anytime someone clicks on the uh, more poems here, check them, check them now. The person will remain on your website. So you give the person the chance to visit more websites and read similar contents. So I follow back into the topmost part. I click on insect or edit link. Then I paste the link into that section. I click on the link options. And then I say, open link in new tab, then okay. So now we've done two things. Internal URL that keeps the reader on your website and one external relevant or related URL that gives the reader additional resources out of your website. Very often bloggers fear to do this. The, the external because when they link to someone they will lose no when you link to related content outside your website it also gives you authority and so when that content is ranking yours could follow up then let's go down there let's see what has happened to our content so far so you see that the um red buttons we have has reduced because we have the internal and external links and you can see the comments it says outbound link good job internal link you have enough internal links good job and so as you check from here you see that you are meeting some uh, criteria the next i want to deal with is image there should be a very good image that is related to the content so when I went to the um, content on Hayford, this I found her image probably, or her picture. So I want to assess it quickly, and then I'll share with you. Um, sorry. Okay, so I pick.
just a moment i'll be with you guys i want to get this one right okay let's go i'm gonna be sure i've got the right thing this one let's stop okay that's fine i see where you are so i have the image i'll be introducing it into the content um i'm sharing the screens right away okay so and i have the um image i didn't get a, a good cut out but for the training purposes i think it will serve its purpose um so i go to my image now before i input this image very often when your image is too big or heavy what it does is that it will slow down the speed at which your website loads and so people will leave your website when they spend 10 very often a, a, a maximum of 10 seconds if your website is not loading people will leave your website should very often load under three seconds and if you have images that are not compressed you don't reduce the size of the image then you would lose um, readers because when they come and the website is slow they may they may decide not to come again so the next thing i'll do is i want to compress the image quickly so that we see how that one is also done before i upload it so if I, you want to compress let me and share did i share my the screen with you guys okay so this is the website uh, compress compress uh, image i'm not using my main web uh, uh, desktop so i have to look for that um, okay i think i found it very good so i'm sharing this website with you nearly every image i use on my blog is compressed so this this particular website compress jpeg.com when you come you will see jpeg png pdf you can compress all this but uh, to do that you click on upload why is this thing slow wow okay so upload um my image is in i think it's on the desktop it's in ceo training show all very good so this is the image i got i didn't crop it well but so i have uploaded it onto the it says wrong format so it means it's probably png so i click png and go through the same procedure then i upload so i upload the image so you will notice that uh, before one content comes out a lot of work goes through it so if, look if you see watch the page you will notice that the image is being reduced up to 61 percent so if i had uploaded the image the way it was it would look nice and useful but it would do a lot of harm to my website so far as the con the speed of the website is slow um, google will very often be reluctant to re make relevant uh, content on your website available to your readers but if the website is very fast it will easily make it available because people are looking for information on the go. So I have um, compressed this uh, image. When you compress, you download, you must name the image with the keywords in the title. 
name the image with the keywords in the title. So um, let me download this quickly and ex extract. Okay. I've extracted this. Uh, I will stop sharing for a moment and pick that image up. Okay, so I've seen it. Let me share what I'm, I'm going to do split away. So now this is the image I have. I'm extracting into my folder to, to easily so to so that i can easily assess it search engine training okay um so i have extracted it the next thing i do is to copy my title i'm copying the title which i will use to name the image so i have copied the title i look for the section where i have to introduce the image so feature image I click on feature image. We want to make sure our content is optimized for search engines. So we have to do all these things. So the original image is this one. This is the um, compressed one. The compressed image has M-I-N attached to it. M-I-N. The first one has screenshot dash one. PNG. This one has dash one, M I N dash PNG. So I'm changing the name with the keywords I want to rank for. Because Google uses artificial intelligence, when you index or name your, key, uh, your images very well, it can also drive traffic onto your content. So rename, I'm pasting my, I can leave it like this or I delete all this and leave the main keywords. Um, what is this saying? If you change the file name, it might become, oh, okay. Um, come again. I think the exclamation marks are there. Okay, so if this, Let me take off these ones. Okay, so, whoa, it's gone. Let me use this heavy one for now. Rename. Rename, wow. I hope this one too doesn't give me some funny. If you change the answer return, whoa. <laughs> okay, let me do something. I'm assuming that this is a related image. Select all and delete, paste this. Wow, what's happening? If I don't get this one, it will. Okay, let me stop sharing the screen and see what the problem is. I'll be back in a few minutes or seconds. Um, where's my folder? So, oh, I think it worked. Well, why was it misbehaving? Okay, so uh, I'm sharing the screen. I can see it has worked. So. Now I'm sharing the screen once again. So, sorry. Uh, hello. Yeah, so I was thinking the ending part of the name of the image must remain. The dot P and everything. Oh, okay. Normally, when you when you key in your uh, the name, it will. What happens is that the system, uh, uh, the program will. Automatic, automatically add the PNG or JPEG to it. Oh, okay. Yes. 
but it's it's already there. I've seen that the image has been captured. All right. Um, it's supposed to show all files so that yes, people can image. This thing is delaying. Wow. Oh, what's happening? Uh, the image is in the folder, but it's not. I don't know why it's, it's behaving like this. Let me try the last one with this and see. Let me use um, Gladys Kisley Hayford. Okay, let me try your method to and see if that one will solve that problem. Oh, okay, thanks. So I'm, I'm, I'm using the heavy image for now. So um, I upload quickly, quickly, okay. So the image is now in the, at the back end. We again introduce the, the heading as alternative key, alternative test, story, alternative test. That is what search engines will use to read your image. So I just paste the keywords there and then I set my default. Now let's check what has happened so far at the bottom side of the page. Um, okay, so now we have just three of the red buttons. The first one says key phrase is in introduction. Your key phrase or its synonyms do not appear in the first paragraph. So I'm picking the key phrase. This is the key phrase. Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem. Gladys Kisley Hayford's. So we have a title. So I'm going to introduce one. Okay, let me clean the whole, let me wipe the whole thing here and then introduce the keywords as it is. Point, rejoice, very good. So we've solved one problem. Now, if you look at the search engine on your right, the right side of the screen, publish. When you go down, you see CEO is not good. Please, can you see it? Search engine optimization is now good, which means that we have achieved a key goal. If you check here, it is green, which are the uh, Yoast SEO premium. It's green because the keyword has been introduced severally. Now, the next thing we do is the tags. Tags are like sh sh uh, words or key phrases that when people click on, they will go directly to the content and they must be related to the content you, you, you are publishing. And one easy way to do it is to paste the keyword in here again. So if you have a good content and you don't do these things, very often your content will sit on the internet and nobody will be seeing it. Now we have two more reds. It's saying that Key phrase in meta description. The meta description has been specified, but it does not contain the key phrase, fix it. So we're going to fix that. Um, so we go to the meta, this is the meta description. It says the key phrase has not been set. So I am wiping everything here and pasting the key phrase. Uh, Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem sets the point ready for Okay, so that's what it was talking about. So you can see it's gone. We are left with one red to go. It says um, key phrase in subheadings, more than 70%, which means that our subheadings 
have too much of the key phrase. So we are going to reduce it and it's so easy to do. If we watch, we have two of them. I'll take the second one off, not off as in deleting, but I'll go back to the header sections and change it to para uh, paragraph. Then I bold in it. So having done that, I go back to search to look at what the information down there is. Very, very excellent. So we now have uh, two more which are um, yellow. Very often you can leave them or you keep working till you get all the 12 red. They are 30, uh, 15 in number. Sometimes you it could be 12. If you get all of them right, very good. If you get most of them right, as we have done now, you could publish your content. So it says, if you look at the first yellow, it says uneven. Some parts of your test do not contain the key phrase or its synonym. So it means that though we have Kisley Hayford's poem to rejoice throughout the content, there are certain sections of the content that do not have it at all. So we have to sometimes look for them. Sometimes when you click on this button, highlight the result in the test. It could show you where the keywords are currently located. So if you can see my screen, you notice that the sections where the keywords are located have the uh, colored sections. So um, you could decide to introduce the key phrase into the content strategically and make sure that it fuses into the, the ideas you are sharing. Let me see if I can quickly do something like that with this, then that will be it for today's section. Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem, Rejoice. So let me look at the last paragraph. So let me say in, in Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem, Rejoice. Sometimes you have to read through to see where you can fuse the keyword you want to run for into it. So in what I have done now reads, in Gladys Kisley Hayford's point, rejoice. If the black and brown race is the, is the F as implied in the rhetorical question, then the entire human existence and survival is completely dependent on the black and brown race. You will see that uh, with just a quick glance, I, I've use the keyword into a section of the content which blends perfectly into the writer. Let's see if it worked for us. If it didn't work, we have to do one or two more. Okay, so we are not yet out of the woods yet. Let me see one more would be, okay. So I want to do this. In the third and fourth line, the persona poses a rhetorical question. So in the third and fourth line of Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem Rejoice, the persona poses a rhetorical question. Um, let me check if it picked that one. Very good. So there we go. We have one more, which says the exact match of the key phrase appears in the search engine title, but not at the beginning. So that is the last one we want to do. I'm going to, which means I'm going to rework on the title. So this is what I'm going to do. I pick off this and introduce the key phrase, Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem Rejoice. I introduce colon. So sometimes you see titles like this on the internet. These are the things they do. A critical analysis. A critical analysis. So um, we have been able to optimize this content and we have all the 15 indicators showing that this content is good enough to be published and that who, uh, search engines would rank it higher when people type in words like uh, gladly, sorry, Gladys Kisley Hayford's poem, Rejoice. Hello? 
Hello. Are we here? Hello. Hello. I hope I didn't miss. Okay, I can see three participants there. So, um, hello. Hello. So, uh, basically, this is what very often when if if you are writing for a website and you write your content and for instance the website uh, 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 editor says write a search engine optimized content these are some of the things you have to do when you do these things and you send your content it makes it easy for the back end workers to publish your content because when they paste your content in a lot of the things that we did in right now would have been done by you and it makes your content get published quicker and faster but if the content is not optimized well you see that sometimes when you make uh, you, you you send the con content for publication it takes a longer time it takes a longer time because it uh, probably someone is working on it at the back end trying to make it uh, um, friendly to users so that people can easily find it so you can see that our, con <clears throat> our content right now has been well optimized. And so it could go live as published content and that will be it for this one. Um, the, the, the final part of the lesson, I, I'm not sure a lot of us are too conversant with it unless you have a website, but I'll still go ahead with it because who knows, you may decide to own one website sooner than later and you will need it. Um, I wonder if I have access to that system here. So I'll stop sharing this page quickly and then try to log on to um, a similar. Um, do I have this? So very often you to index when you publish the content to make sure that uh, Google shows it to as many people as possible when they type the keywords, you have to go to what we call Google Search Console and instruct Google to index your content. That is, uh, make it visible and record it into each system so that anytime someone is looking for such a content, the person can find it. I'm sharing a, a page with you that has a similar thing. Um, Okay, now, so this screen you are seeing is Google Search Console. You, if you have a website, all you have to do is to um, type Google Search Console, click on it to register, and then it will register you, but you need to do a little bit of technical work to get this interface ready. And um, I will more than willing to help anyone who wants to set it up if you don't have one for your website. Now, when you publish your content, or when we publish content that you send to a blog a website, after doing all the search engine optimization, this is where we come. And this is where the final work is done. Um, if you click on this drop down in this search console, there are names of websites here. Okay, that's wonderful. I have this website here, which we are currently working on. So I'm trying to open, if I get access, I would. Okay, I took it off this system. So I can't access it. Oh, that's rather unfortunate, but I will still go ahead. So when you post, when you publish the content, you copy the URL. So I'm assuming that I have published the, content, let me do that quickly. Um, uh, oh. So my brother, I'll publish your content and give it uh, and direct it to your, um, your account later on. So this is the content we have written. I'm assuming uh, I want to publish it. So I just publish this content and then it goes live. 
Now, when the content goes live, you get your URL from the content. Um, this is taken to, okay, it's published now. Publish, publish, publish. Okay, so now it is published. Um, uh, I copy the copy link address. So this is what we do with the search uh, Google uh, Search Console. Well, you copy the link, copy the URL link, um, then you go to that particular um, page, the search engine optimization page. So I'm sharing that page with you straight away. So this is the page. So if the, the content I am publishing, if the content is for this website, assuming it is for this website, all I have to do is to click here and then paste the URL. When you paste the URL, you hit or click enter. This is not for this website, so it will not permit it. When you hit that for uh, uh, the, the link and it, it will get it indexed. What it means is that Google's crawlers, that fish for new information and content online will come to your website, analyze it using artificial intelligence and be able to show it to people who want to or are looking for similar contents. So when you do this, Although others have published a similar content like yours, if you do this after 15 to 20 seconds, your content will be live on Google search. So right from that time, anybody who is looking for the content will may start seeing it. But if there are other content that are already there like yours, it will take a little while for your content to rise to page one. Sometimes it can take just a few hours. Sometimes it can take three months. But if you keep indexing your content, very soon, very often your content will be showing on Google search. And the more your content so shows on Google search, the more people will visit your content. So um, this is the best lesson on um, Google search uh, uh, optimization, uh, search engine optimization and Google search console. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be uh, uh, more than ready to answer them. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes. Please, you can um, ask your question. Well, thank you. But I couldn't get some. Of the things. Okay. Of the network. Which particular one? Hello. Hello. Um, I am recording it, so I'm sure we will share that one. But if you could ask your question, it could also help others. When you started the so I couldn't get what. When when I started because, which one? The whole the, from the beginning. Yeah, the first thing you showed after the introduction. When the screen. After the introduction. Um, I think after the introduction. Show the first screen. I went off. Uh, you were on. Uh, you you. The the next screen I saw was the uh, the point. Uh, the analysis on the point. Oh okay. So let me let me quickly go back to um, that page and share. Um, um, so what we did from the beginning was that we looked at the title. We said the title was okay, but at the tail end we had to rearrange the what's the name the um, the search engine optimization title. 
So if you watch the search, search engine optimization title right now, you see that it's a little bit different from this one. That one starts from Gladys Kisley. Hey, what's point rejoice? This one says a critical analysis. So still doing okay. corrections. We could just do this. Then bring the column and introduce this. Take off this. Very often, when your title also is free of uh, um, um, words like the and in at those articles, it makes search engines to easily see your content. Now, so what we did from the beginning, what we did at the beginning was that we introduced the key phrase into the first paragraph. Uh -huh. So this was what we did. We did it earlier on, but it didn't have a point. It had title. Then the search engine require, uh, optimization requires that we modified it. So we introduced the poem into it and it picked. Then we said after that, when you introduce, and the keyword where we want to rank for our Gladys Kisly, hey, Ford's point, rejoice. We said you introduce it uh, as often as you can into the content, making sure that each time you introduce it, it blends into the content. So one way, if you want to check what we have done right now, if I click F, so Gladys Kisly, hey, hey Ford, you can see the locations of the, uh, yeah. you keep introducing yeah. it. When you're writing, oh, okay, okay. Uh -huh. So that this is what we, we, we were doing throughout, introducing the keyword so that okay. uh, uh, artificial intelligence can see it and make good use of, of it. Okay, okay. I'm sure that. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all? Yes. So a quick okay. one. So for instance, if I'm since I, I, I blog a lot on education, if I'm writing a content on 2021 BC, I will be introducing mm -hmm. words like 2021 BC in subsequent paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Then sometimes I'll instead of 2021 yeah. BC, I'll introduce uh, 2021 uh, uh, basic education uh, basic uh, uh, education, education certificate examination. Then the next time I introduce yeah. 2021 BC. What I'm doing is that 2021 BC is the keyword or the key phrase, and okay. the long one is the synonym. So if I keep repeating okay. it, the moment I publish it and I index it, anytime someone is looking for information about 2021 BC, our that content will pop up. And it means I'll get a lot of people visiting that content. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Very the last, this one, I will look at it later on. Readability is also a, a, related to this. Very often, when you have the two of them being green, excellent. But if you have set engine without it, you will still rank very high. So oh, okay. um, I'll, I'll end this um, tutorial here. Thanks for being part of it. Thank you too for uh, the tutorials. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry. Uh, were you able to work on the comment session? Um, I did, but it seems it's still not activated. It might be a problem at the back end. I, I, I have seen a few people passing comments. The comment section is there. Okay. They have to if you if sometimes when you click, it will spin and not open. So I went mm, on it. Yes. I introduced the Facebook comment uh, uh, option there, so that when you click, you can pass a comment and then it will show. Uh, a few people have sent comments, but the comments are not forthcoming. So I will check that one again and then we we'll see how we can work on it. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you.